Was Jesus a conservative or a progressive? As a country becomes more and more divided, one of the key dividing lines is between people who call themselves progressive and call themselves conservative. I recently heard probably the best way to understand the difference between progressive Christians and conservative Christians. And it comes from the author of the book, When Helping Hurts, Brian Fickert. He said this in an interview and it stuck with me since then. Basically, progressives see the problem of sin as living within the system itself whereas conservatives see the problem of sin living within the individual. And so when conservative Christians think about the problems plaguing the world, greed, uh, racism, bigotry, all those types of things, they locate the problem within individuals. Systemic racism can seem like an oxymoron. How can a system be racist if sin is just found in people's hearts? People can be racist, but a system's something good. The police are here to help us. The border wall keeps out potentially evil immigrants from coming into our nation. Think about the word conserve itself. The literal definition is to protect something from harm or destruction. Conservatives want to conserve or protect the system because it's the only thing keeping evil in the individual hearts of people at bay. Now on the other side, you have progressive Christians. Where do they see the sin? Like I said, they see sin within the system itself. The systems themselves are corrupt and oppressive and have taken otherwise good people and subjugated them, pushed them down to the point where even if they commit crimes, it's really the fault of the system that drove them to that lifestyle. So the solution is not to preserve the system, it's to progress beyond it. And this is why you hear a lot of times people using the word dismantle. Dismantle the patriarchy, dismantle the police force, because the system itself has to be taken apart to allow good people to flourish. So to get back to the question I posed at the beginning, what was Jesus? Was he a conservative or a progressive? In many ways, the environment that Jesus lived was very similar to the one we live in now. Jesus was Jewish, and the Jewish nation was under the control of the Roman Empire, and Rome was a lot like the United States. There was one specific group of Jewish leaders called the Pharisees, and they would have been like the ultra-conservatives of their day. Their whole thing was about preserving the Jewish laws. Jews had all these different laws, and Pharisees saw the failures of the society around them was because they hadn't followed God's law that he had given them. And so when Jesus comes on the scene, the Pharisees did not like him because they thought that he was gonna come and try to get rid of all their laws. And in several ways, their fears weren't unfounded. Jesus comes and takes all of these laws and turns them on their head, and in many cases makes it so there's no need for the law to exist at all. One of the most important pieces of Jewish law was about the Sabbath, the one day of the week that no one is supposed to work. And the Pharisees' definition of work got broader and broader and broader until people couldn't really do anything. Yet Jesus walks out and he starts healing people who are sick directly on the Sabbath. The Jews also had these rules about which foods were unclean that you shouldn't touch. Yet Jesus says it's not the food that goes into you that defiles you, it's what comes out of your heart that defiles you. Because Jesus saw the ways that the law itself, the system in place, had become corrupt. It was a systemic problem and Jesus was saying we need to progress beyond this injustice. And so at this point it might seem like clearly Jesus was a progressive. But this picture of Jesus is only half the story. Because in other places, Jesus didn't get rid of laws, he intensified them. He gave a very famous speech on top of a hill where he said, it's not actually just unlawful for you to have an affair, it's actually unlawful for you to look lustfully at someone. He also says it's not just against the law to murder someone, but to just have hatred towards your, your friend or your brother or sister is on par with actually killing them. In Matthew chapter 19, he reaffirms the traditional family structure and affirms that he believes that there are two biological genders. He didn't say, let's ditch the Bible because it's out of place and on the wrong side of history. He quoted scripture more than anyone. He never outright said we need to abolish this corrupt government. He told people to actually pay taxes. He also went up to individual people and held them accountable for their individual sins. And when you take all these examples together, it starts to look like Jesus was much more of a conservative. How is this possible? How can Jesus simultaneously affirm parts of both sides when the world today says those two sides are irreconcilable? Because this is what Jesus understood. The problem of sin, injustice, oppression, it's not located just in the individual or just in the system. It's in both. Sin affects everything in this world. And so Jesus comes to offer redemption, freedom from this bondage to sin for both individuals and systems, and neither tribe can fully claim Jesus as their own. It's Jesus' own words that he says, my kingdom 
is not of this world. How did Jesus do this consistently? And how can we also do this as Christians to avoid becoming the hypocritical Christians we don't wanna be? That will be our topic for next week. If you have found this video helpful, please consider sharing it on any of your social media accounts. Like and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, and consider joining us for one of our weekly Zoom discussion sessions, where we'll be talking through all these issues more in depth, because my guess is this has raised a lot of questions and maybe has angered you in some ways that you wanna flesh out with other people who are gonna do it in a respectful way. Our Tuesday night Zoom groups are the place to do this. They're at 7.15 p.m., they last about an hour long, and you can actually sign up in the link in our bio. We hope to see you there.